The Ukraine war and defence very much in the news today. Here's a clip from Boris Johnson in a documentary about that war. This is what he had to say. He, he sort of he threatened me at one point and said, you know, uh, Boris, I don't want to hurt you, but uh, with a missile, it would only take a minute or something like that, you know. Uh, you know jolly. Uh, but I think from the, the very relaxed tone that he was taking, uh, the sort of air of detachment that he seemed to have, he was just playing along uh, with my attempts to get him to negotiate. Well, it's typical Boris Johnson, isn't it? He sort of said and something like that. And it's all a little bit vague. Well, the newspapers went with it in a big way today. The Kremlin have denied it completely. I have no idea as to the truth of it. But perhaps what is more relevant is the US general warning the British army, warning us as a country, we're no longer regarded as a top-level fighting force. And indeed, Conservative Member of Parliament, Tobias Elwood, Conservative Chair of the Defence Committee, said he is very concerned. Rishi Sunak, in response, said, oh, absolutely, we're still a top-level fighting force. Well, the defence editor and veteran commentator on these things, Con Coughlin from the Daily Telegraph, joins me down the line now. Uh, Con, you know, if I put you up, if I put you up against a wall and ask you, do we still have top-level fighting forces, in your opinion? We have some elements that are top-level, but looking at it in the round, Nigel, the US Army General is quite correct. And US Army Generals have been saying to me for a decade or more that we are losing our warfighting capability. I mean, the basic requirements of the British Army to be a top-level fighting force is, is to have the ability to deploy and sustain a war fighting division. Um, at the moment, we would struggle to get a brigade out the door. And if we got a brigade out the door, which is about half the strength of the division, we'd be able to sustain it for a few weeks, but not long term. So the prospect of doing the kind of missions we did in Iraq and Afghanistan recently um, are just nigh on impossible. And frankly, I think this has been a deliberate policy by a successive conservative government since 2010. Basically, if the army, if we don't have an army big enough to deploy it, then we can't deploy it. And so that keeps us out of getting involved in controversial wars. Well, yeah, I mean, that, and that may be a popular point with some people that we're not involved. But there is also the question of, you know, vital national defence in time of crisis. Um, uh, uh, and I mean, there are some that say we have actually spent some quite good money modernising the Navy and the Air Force, but it's actually the Army that's the problem. Is that your view? Um, the Army is a big problem, but I think the Navy is struggling with the number of combat ships. The RAF is struggling with the number of fighter jets and, you know, defending our skies and protecting our shores is a fundamental duty of, of, of the government. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm always reminded of that old adage that, you know, we don't choose wars, wars choose us. And very few people predicted that the, the Russian invasion of Ukraine on the scale that's been conducted. And we now find ourselves helping to defend Ukraine, and just by sending 14 Challenger tanks to Ukraine has depleted our fighting forces, our army fight, fighting force, such a level that, you know, we, we, could, we could barely muster, um, you know, a couple of squadrons of our own tanks uh, if, we, if we were required to do so. And when you look back, you know, a couple of decades ago, we had, you know, 300 tanks or so available. Now we've got the last time I looked, it was about between 40 and 50, although the MOD quibble with these figures. But if you wanted to get tanks operational tomorrow, if we could, if we could lay our hands on 40, I, you know, I'd, I'd be very surprised. Wow. Con Coughlin, on that depressing note, thank you for Sorry. joining us here and telling us the truth. Yeah, very no, depressing, not. but thank you. <laughs> well, there you are. That's what happens in year 13 of a Conservative government who've run our forces down in the most shameful way.